lounge and son. Hey, welcome back to the comic lounge. My name's Ryan, and back with me again, I have none other than Mr. Todd McFarland himself. I'm so happy to have you back on. I can't wait to get into some of the new stuff you've been working on. Sure. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Pretty yeah. Pretty- appreciate uh, you speaking the gospel about our industry so. oh, of course I, I love it man i mean it's my favorite industry i love comics i've been reading them since i was five 37 so it's a long time i mean I, most of my life is spent reading comics so oh wow oh uh, you're 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 one of the ogs then it's cool. yeah i'm definitely a lifer that's for sure yeah um, so last time we talked, I think, if I remember correctly, I feel like Spawn 300 had just come out. So it it has been a long time, capped off a story, basically capped a story that's been going on since issue 100. The Throne of Hell has now been filled. Yeah, so, that's, uh, that, so that got capped at 350 now, right? 300 mm-hmm. was sort of the big anniversary book and then setting the record for the longest running creator-owned book and then now fast forward to you know last month uh where 350 came out so we tacked on another 50 issues and uh yeah uh just putting a exclamation if you will on this outstanding piece of sort of side mythology it hasn't really been sort of a big dominant piece for 250 issues uh you can't you can't keep something like that, but I I know I've mentioned it off and on for those that have been paying attention. Uh, and then and then as we headed towards three fifty, I thought it was time to basically put a put a cork in in that open bottle and 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 sort of give an answer, uh, and that the answer would be both an ending and a beginning. That it would have it would have a cause and effect of what's happening now in the other books. Yeah, I think it's interesting. You don't often see an issue 350 being a good jumping on point, but you somehow found a way to make issue 350 a hell of a jumping on point. Well, well, most books don't get to 350. So that's true. Uh, 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 but yeah, you. I mean, again, you know, you, obviously your nice round numbers, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. Those, those are the ones that people are going to get excited about regardless of what you do, right? So I thought that we had to sort of have a little bit more of a game plan of what we were going to do here for 350. Um, and it, it's a bit of a continuation of what essentially began in 300, which mm-hmm. was, you know, doing the time rip and then all these characters pouring in that then the next year begins sort of the Spawn's universe. And, and then we're off to the races. And now the question is, what are a bunch of these characters doing? And, one of the things which should come as no surprise to people is just people chasing down power bases, right? And and once a few of them found out that sitting on the throne not only sort of makes you the ruler, but it also then enhances your your powers. Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh wow, whoa. So so not only do I get to be the king, but I get to be the king and I get to be twice the badass that I was. Shoot. Uh, and so the incentive, when that information came out, it basically increased the incentive for a couple of people, a couple of the characters to basically go, I now know what my mission is, right? Forget Spawn, forget Earth. I've, I got to go, I got to go get that throne. Um, but the reality of it for Spawn was that he knew he couldn't allow his enemies to get there first. So there was a lot of contemplation on his part, and we and I even had him, the thought for a while of whether it actually would be spawned. Not mm-hmm. because he wants it, but basically the dick block, right? Mm-hmm. To just go, I don't want to do this. I have no ambition, but it's better than letting the alternative sit on it, which I know will come back and haunt Earth. So I'll, I'll sacrifice myself. But uh, he ended up, near the end finding an alternative to that answer so and but he's going to see it's not quite that clean cut uh there's there's repercussions to yeah i really loved you know how you 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 make the reader think it, it might be going one way and then you have the flip you had the some great moments between al and wanda in that issue as well it just yeah. to me it was like a such a such a great like cap to like the story that's been like kind of in the background 
and then also like where you leave it and how that's going to affect the entire line of the books moving forward. Yeah. So for about the next year or so, uh, maybe a little bit less, what they find out very quickly, and you see it in the epilogue of issue 350, is that when they return to Earth, the entire planet's been sort of blanketed by sort of a, a dead zone effect. And it means that everybody from heaven and hell has are now mortal. It's it 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 be, it's an interesting concept to me because it like if you take everybody that's got superpowers and you sort of take it away, but not it's actually not everybody. It's only heaven and hell, mm -hmm. right? So if 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 the if heaven and hell characters are up here, and that includes Spawn and all his, and then you've got like these other quasi superhero characters down here, and all of a sudden these two guys drop, then these guys get moved up just by default right mm -hmm. like oh my gosh if you're if i'm look at i'll use baseball vernacular if i'm a 250 hitter and all the 300 hitters quit i'm now the guy with the highest batting average i'm the best i'm the best one right and so a little bit of that's not only is that going to happen but even those that lose their powers you're going to find that they're not all equal in terms of being mortal any more than anybody else right so you know, Al Simmons it was trained in the military in a very skilled way. So he's not just, he's not an accountant <laughs> now, right? So mm -hmm. and, and and we're also going to play with on the on the on the sort of the the bad guy side, if you will, that there's going to be a scrum a power on the bad guy side because I mean, think about it. If you were the fifth highest ranking person in your mafia cartel, right? And the reason was because all the other mob bosses had way more power over you. But then you found out tomorrow that that power went away. Shit, they're, they're now your equals. Maybe if you're smart enough, you could actually get ahead of these five or six people that have been keeping you down. That's, that's on your own side, right? Like, I mean, there's going to be sort of contentions like internally uh that it's not just like oh my god we all lost powers we're gonna i'm the good guy i'm gonna go after bad guys and i'm the bad guy i'm gonna go after the good guy it, there's gonna be a there's gonna be a re-ranking of like who's who now gets to call some of the shots uh and and that wasn't it's not the same ranking as when they all had their powers so anyways that's that's sort of the the concept the fun that we're about to have here in the next little while oh yeah I, I know you're also switching artists from Gunslinger and the actual Spawn. What was the decision behind flipping the artists on those respective books? Well, it was, uh, so Brett Booth was doing uh, Gunslinger and then uh, Carlo Barbary was doing Spawn. And they both had a nice long run on it. Um, but one of the things that I'm cognizant of, because I, I, I went through it myself, is trying to take the temperature of your artist to make sure they're not getting complacent and or bored. And so in having a conversation with them, it was just like, Hey, you know, you guys have both had nice long runs on the book and I appreciate it, but are you guys looking for maybe just a little bit more variety in your diet here? Um, and, and so the thought was, well, why don't we just flip it? Right. I mean, Carlo had done a couple uh, issues of Spawn that had Gunslinger in it, and I thought he did a brilliant Gunslinger. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, oh man, I like he draws a kick-ass Gunslinger, and then and then Brett is like, well, I never really done Spawn, right? You know, I mean, he's he's sort of the A guy for a little bit. So it was like, hey, you know what? Uh, and it's two different writers. I'm writing Gunslinger, and 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 Corey McConville's doing Spawn. So you know, they'll also get a different a chance with a different writer. Carlo and I did a decent run together before I hand over to, to uh, Rory. Mm -hmm. And um, so, okay, well, I, I don't know. It, 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 that was it. It was just, yeah. it was just, it was uh, my, my job is to try and keep talented people for as long as possible. And both Brett and Carlo are staggeringly good and they both, do monthly comic books, which is getting harder and harder and harder to find in our industry. Yep. And so 
I'm, I'm trying everything I can to make sure that they're getting what they need so that I don't burn them out. So it was, it was that. And so 350 comes along. It was like, Hey, cool. And if I didn't do it, then I would have well, probably waited till issue 50 of gunslinger. And that. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but 350 came along and it was like, Hey, let's do the flip. Yeah. I, I I've been loving each of their respective runs on the spawn books. I think they're fantastic. And like you said, it is rare even to get an artist staying on a book for that long of a period yeah. of time, you know, and like they yeah. both have been on there for good chunks. Yeah. Yeah. They, I think it's interesting because they both pride themselves on that, right? So, uh, and that's, you know, again, that's getting way, way, way harder to find that not only you got people that have the skill and people that want to do the, the work, but then people that are content to basically stay on a book and make their mark on a book, um, which is interesting because when, when I broke in and some of my peers at that time, that was just a given. That was just what you did. Your goal was to get on a monthly book and then stay on it for a while and and become the person synonymous with that book, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, when when I was collecting, it was like, oh, the Frank Miller Daredevils and oh, the the Burn Austin uh, X Men and and oh man, the George the the George Perez Avengers and so you sort of had a, a, a an artist attached to the book and the character right mm -hmm. um and so that's what we all did right rob rob liefeld you know made his mark on x factor and jim lee comes and did uh, the x-men and mark Silvestri did his run on wolverine mark bagley did a nice run on spider-man i mean and so people then remember you for those moments mm -hmm. uh, there but that doesn't seem to be the given uh, with a lot of the artists now so when you do run across them and they're they're almost unicorns now i i i like a go human do like what i need to do what i need to do to keep you happy what i need to do to keep you happy so that's it yeah you know what as i'm like listening to you say it it like i i love comics obviously you know like i said i've been reading a long time but it it makes me sad that we don't get those like long runs where you're like oh like I worked in a shop before so like recommending newer stuff i can't be like check out that run like i'm always recommending stuff from either when i was a kid in the 90s or 80s because those are the seminal runs to me you don't see like in modern day those seminal runs like they were when they were so prevalent back then yeah yeah i, I again <laughs> maybe i don't know it'd be interesting talking to new readers maybe we sound like grandpas right you know <laughs> in, in my day yeah uh but there's something i mean i i've said before people said hey todd if you were stranded on an island and you could only take like one series with you what book would you take the title that i would take would be uh the tomb of dracula and and part of the reason of it besides i enjoyed the book was that almost every single issue i think there were 72 of them Mm -hmm. Every single issue, almost every single one was drawn by Gene Colan. And and then at some point, Tom Palmer, the inker, came on and he was with the book the whole way. So I think that team finally I got put together maybe by issue five. And then they stayed till 70, issue 72. And that book was bi-monthly. That's how long they stayed. That was like 140 issues, you know, I mean, cut it in half. It would have been the equal of 140 issues in right. terms of uh, in terms of time. So, yeah, I I I mean, I grew up at a time where that was just sort of a given. Everybody was going to stay on the book for 10, 20, 30 issues, uh, whether it was John Buscema or Sal Buscema or you know, again later guys like Mark Bagley and and uh, the Kubert brothers. You know, even even Frank Miller's run on Daredevil was was pretty lengthy right mm -hmm. burn burn austin x-men you know they were there and then you know jim lee and eric larson myself and a few others we came on and picked our books and did our little runs on them right like yeah it's cool because why as, as a fan i just go man i like that so i want to be able to go and get it the next time right like mm -hmm. i like chocolate i like chocolate ice cream and then like when you go to the ice cream store you don't want to go what do you mean you've got the same it's like 
either you don't have the chocolate ice cream or if you do, it's not the same chocolate ice cream, right? And you're like, man, I like, I like that. I like that one. I, I could eat that all day long for the next decade, right? So I, I was the same way. When when John Byrne and Terry Austin left the X-Men, I, I, I held on hope that they would come back for, I don't know, probably 15 years before I finally gave up. But, you know, maybe there's still people think I'm going to come back to Spider-Man. Who knows? I mean... <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't be sad if you did do another Spider-Man no, right. story. No. You know? Yeah. Right. No. No. That's it. But yeah. I'm, I'm just going. It's like, oh man, don't go because you like something. It's okay. So I'm hoping that people like Brett Booth's artwork and uh, and Carlo's artwork uh, will will stick around and do it. And then on on the other two books, uh, the Scorch, I got Steven Segovia. He's been He's there since, since day one. Right, we're up to almost thirty issues on that, and then even uh, on King Spawn, the vast majority of that has been done by uh, Javi Fernandez, who's got this cool, moody style. And I know Javi. If you were to talk to him when I first approached him, he's like, "Well, I don't really do monthly books," and here he is, having done ninety percent of the run. Right? I think he sort of surprised himself at like, "Man, I can do this. That's cool." So yeah. No, I mean, I think the entire line, it was cool watching it's like, you know, expand month after month until we got the four core titles. And now, I mean, you're expanding again. I, I mean, I'm yeah. assuming most of these are mini series. I know you did like the the Mike Del Mundo book, the Unwanted Violence. Yeah, which I absolutely loved. I mean, it, that was a fantastic book. But what was the idea behind like doing it again? Like with the you know, the Dark Ages, you got Sam and Twitch coming back, you got Rat City. Uh, medieval spawn uh, jimmy's gonna do or pomiati's gonna do that you know other gunslinger book which sounds really dope too so. yeah so it was the 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 four books that i've got right now are all fairly tightly sort of linked to the center which is spawn right mm -hmm. you got gunslinger spawn you got she spawn she's running the team and then you've got another spawn book right so I, I just wanted to broaden, the, you know, if I'm going to expand the Spawn universe, th like I need to not make Spawn at the center of every one of those ideas. So, you know, Sam and Twitch coming out is literally a hard boiled detective story, right? And so are they characters that were introduced in the Spawn comic? Yes. So is there a little bit of a hope? That's why they're part of the universe? Yes. Do they hang out with Spawn? Sure, about five days a year, right? But but the other 360 days, they're just great detectives and cops, and they solve cases. And that's what this book is. So I wanted to create like a variety of books so that, for instance, with Sam and Twitch, if you don't like superhero book, you can read Sam and Twitch. If you're not a Spawn fan, you can read Sam and Twitch, right? If like So you don't have to... I'm not forcing people. I don't want people to feel compelled to have to buy all of it to get sort of the flavor of what's going on. I want to create a handful of different stories and genres and then let the readers decide on what they are. So, so you, you know, you got Sam Twitch's detective. You're going to have Rat City. He's going to have a little bit more of a sci-fi bent, although that would be closer to sort of the mythology of spawn given that it's set in the future mm -hmm. it's sort of the, it's sort of the fallout of the a spawn existed in their past right which is our current day spawn then we'll have stuff like you know the spawn kills every spawn which is a continuation on the spawn kills everyone so there's a little bit of comedy if people want whimsical we have that and then we'll have some historical stuff with like the dark ages um the Jimmy Palmiotti written Gunslinger is because the current Gunslinger has been pulled from sort of pre-Civil War to today. And Jimmy's going to basically tackle the stories that happened before he got pulled into modern time. Basically mm -hmm. the cowboy. He's going to do the cowboy story. Nice. I can't, I didn't want to do a lot of cowboy mixed with modern in the regular book because I didn't want people to go well, what is this book? Is it a cowboy book or is it a modern book, right? Um, so I wanted to keep that more to flashbacks and not be sort of the norm. But I think the gunslinger in the West is really cool. 
Uh, and so I needed to basically just create the space, in this case, the book that would give that room for those kinds of stories to be told. So that's, you know, sort of it. I mean, I think they've got a book of sort of the origin of the violator coming up and, and you know, a handful of other titles. Because uh, again, I, I, I don't want, I, I, I mean, we will be introducing superhero stuff. Again, Focus, Focus going to come out. That's a superhero movie, but it's not a hero that gets his power from heaven and hell mm -hmm. that, you know, he just, he just, the equivalent to getting hit by a bolt of lightning and all of a sudden he's got, he's got his powers. Um, okay, cool. Uh, but he's one of those guys now that, that hasn't lost his powers in the world now in the current, uh, storyline because he didn't derive it from heaven now. So he's going to be like, kind of a, a powerful entity now in the world that's going on and people might lean on him a little bit more they otherwise wouldn't because they had you know they could shoot rays out of their hands they can't do that anymore uh, so just a wide just a wide range and let people pick and choose what they want i just you know look at everybody doesn't buy every issue of marvel even if you're a marvel fan and everybody doesn't buy every issue of whatever dc puts out even if you're a dc fan what you what you do is you have a limited budget. Uh, we each have sort of a, one that fits our own, and then and then we have to make choices within that budget, right? And so you pick what you like, and and you walk away from things you usually don't like, right? Sort of we do that with almost everything we consume. So I just want to give a, a sort of a buffet of comic books, and then you just take and put on your plate what you think is interesting and is going to entertain you i mean you definitely make it easier since you have a the lowest price point of everybody else that's putting the comics out oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so the salmon twitch you know 2.99 um i didn't do a lot i didn't do some and, and it's interesting we we're just having an, uh, emails of that i didn't do like incentive covers i didn't go double-sized issue i could have because we've got a lot of issues finished uh, and maybe I should have, maybe in hindsight, I should have, but I, I did what I did on Sam and Twitch. Cause I know what's coming down the pipeline mm -hmm. and what's coming down the pipeline are more titles. And what I don't want to do is go, Oh my God, Sam and Twitch. You should, first off, Oh my gosh, you should buy spawn 350. And then the ne very next month, Oh my gosh, you should buy Sam and Twitch best thing ever. And then, Oh my gosh, you should buy Rat City, best thing ever. And then, oh my gosh, you should buy like all of a sudden, I, I I'm just gonna become white noise, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I what I want to do is just I knew Sam and Twitch was gonna be an eclectic book. I didn't want to hype it up like it was like issue 350 of spawn, because I don't think it 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 rises to the same level. I think it's a high quality book. For people who like that type of material at a really easy entry point if you're curious go right and 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 then i'll sort of you know pick and choose how hard i'm beating the drums not because i don't believe in all the books i think all the books deliver so for people who like cop and detective stuff i'm hoping that some of them will say sam twitch is their favorite book of all their detective books right but, but that doesn't mean it's their favorite comic book, right? Because again, they might have 10 superhero comic books they like better. So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to just be fair-minded to the, to the readers and the retailers and not get them to think that everything has to be super hyped up, right? Um, and if I, and, and on some level, it'd be interesting to see what happened with Sam and Twitch is because I didn't overhype it and I didn't put multiple covers and didn't do all this incentive stuff to drive sales. Will the drop from one to two be less than normal if I hyped it way up and then you get these big drops to issue number two, right? Which is literally how it works for like the last 15 years at Image Comics. You can, you can put 15 covers on issue number one and hype the shit out of it and do whatever else and get big numbers. But, but if you got 15 covers and you only do one cover the next issue, the retailers just do simple math. Well, I guess I need one fifteenth the amount mm -hmm. because it's only one cover, right? And you can't, and the thing is you can't keep doing 15 covers. Yeah. So you, you can't do that. So what ends up happening is you get these big drops 
And I'm, I, I, it'd be curious with Sam and Twitch to see, because I didn't play those tricks, good, bad, or indifferent, of whether it's the number they came out with is actually going to be closer to the number of issue number two, three, and four. Yeah, I think it, I mean, that is an interesting, uh, I mean, thing to think about because like I work in the shop, like I would notice that, but I never paid attention to the drops and percentages when like you remove all the variants because you do them on big issues, obviously you're going to do a few more covers, but then those numbers aren't there the next time because they, those covers don't exist. Yeah. So it'll be cool and, to and, see. And the, and, the, and the thing is, that's okay because that's that's just math. It's just that it it's it's hard on the creative team sometimes <laughs> and we, that they like get so excited on issue number one, woo, woo. and and to some extent, I'm trying to sort of tell them when when they ask, like I, it's a, it's a false positive. It's a false positive. Uh, just like that's gravy. You just got a bunch of gravy on top of your potatoes there. But your the the reality of your book is really going to be issue number six and seven, because then what happens is your the floor hardens on your sales, and you can start to say, oh okay, I can I can guarantee myself this many sales, and now your your goal then long term is to say what can I do to maybe get some excitement, and then when it comes down the floor rises just a little bit more. Right. So if I'm getting 15,000 sales by issue six, can I do something that pops it up to 30,000 because I did an event and then it comes down and it then it's at 17,000, not 15 anymore. So and again, it might not seem like a lot to go from 15,000 to 17,000, but that's over 10 percent. Right? Yeah, no, it makes a difference. 10 percent would be 16.5. So. Even if you go from 15,000 to 18,000, that's a 20% gain. Most businesses would love to have 20% gains on their business, right? So I've always tried to figure out if a store is ordering 10 copies of Spawn, how can I get them to 11, not to 20, to 11, because that's 10%. And if every store ordered one more, then I've got 10% gain. That's, I'll take it. I'll take it. So. I mean, I'm very excited for everything in the Spawn comics. I, I mean, I love Sam and Twitch. I love, uh, you know, Detective Story. So I'm very happy that that's coming back. Um, speaking of Spawn, besides juggling all the talent that you're doing in the comic books, yep. is there any update on the movie that I know you've been working on for quite a while? <laughs> we all been working on it for a while. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, the the I, I got to read a portion of the script recently. Right. So that's that's coming along. Um, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll, it'll, you know, be finished here. I get the second half of it here in the next month, two months at the most. I'm I'm guessing I don't I, like, you know, Scott, the writer just writes at his own pace. so I don't have any control over him. Um, but that seems like that might be a reasonable amount of time. Um, and then we'll take a look at it and, and then we'll all make our notes, see how much rewriting, if any, needs to be done. And then we'll clean up the script and then we'll have a script that everybody's sort of comfortable with. And we'll go into the city and we'll we'll offer it up for sale. Right. That's all going to happen this year. That's all going to happen this year. And then you've got pieces, you know, that, you know, Scott. Silver is doing the majority of the writing on it right now uh, in conjunction with, you know, Malcolm Spellman and, and Matt Nixon, who started. Um, uh, he's the guy that wrote the Joker movie and the Joker 2 movie coming out, right? I, I think I think if you're asking me, I'm betting, man, I think Joker 2 has a good chance of being the number one grossing movie of the year, right? I think... I think um, you're good. in terms of comic book movies, we just got Madam Web. Mm. You're gonna get you're gonna get Craven the Hunter, mm. and you're gonna then then you're gonna get uh, Venom. Venom's gonna be you know part three of what we've already seen twice, so it'd be it'd be solid. And then you're gonna get a kick, and the kick is gonna be Deadpool, and then Deadpool is gonna come out. We all know that's gonna work, and and then Deadpool they're gonna start saying, oh my God, comic book movies are alive and well again. And then, and then, you know, shortly thereafter, Joker 2 is going to come, which I think is actually going to be bigger. 
than Deadpool. And, 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 and but here's what's going to happen. Because I think this town is predictable. Hollywood. I think they're going to sit there and go, oh my gosh, you can make money off superhero comic book movies. They just need to be R-rated because Deadpool is going to be R-rated and Joker 2 is going to be R-rated. So they're going, that's, that's it. we got to do R-rated. So they're all going to go to their libraries and go, get me all the dark, get me all the dark characters, right? So, you know, get ready for Punisher. So, uh, but... If they're going to then shift gears, which I think they will, and go, oh my gosh, we need to do R-rated movies, then they're going, who else could we do? Then we're going to be holding a script of a character that fits the bill that we've been saying since day one should be R-rated. Oh, and by the way, the guy holding the script is a guy who wrote Joker 2 that might be another billion dollar movie, right? And, and if it is, we'll see. If it is, then then Scott Silver, the writer, will be one of two human beings on this planet to be able to say that they've written more than one billion dollar movie, right? So he, he will have written Joker 1 and Joker 2, and the only other human being, unless I'm missing somebody, is James Cameron, right? So, and but, but Scott did it with R-rated material. That mountain's way steeper. So... I don't know. We're, we should be in good shape. We, you know, the team, we've been waiting long enough. I know Scott's been, you know, working hard ever since the pandemic, uh, you know, trying to put this all together and, and everything else. So oddly, this ungodly amount of time that's been happening may actually be a blessing <laughs> in a weird way that so much time has gone by we may be in the right place at the right time. Who knows? So we'll see. I mean, I definitely think that, you know, I think it's superhero fatigue, not just comic book movie fatigue for sure. Maybe with some people, but Spawn is like, has the potential to be some, I mean, something completely different than what we've been getting. Something unique. So I think, I mean, I I, 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 I'm going to put you back. I, I disagree with that. I don't think there's a fatigue for any genre. I just think that's mediocrity, right? And so, so people like you do five bad uh, Western movies, and Hollywood goes, nobody wants to go to a Western movie. No, nobody wants to, nobody wants to go to bad Western movies. You can do what you can do Western, just do good ones, right? And as soon as somebody does two in a row, then people go, oh my God, Westerns work. Oh my gosh, somebody does two good rom coms. Oh my God, those work. Somebody does two good drama, like oh okay, those work, right? So. I don't know. I, 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 I'm I looking at the movies maybe slightly different than people in Hollywood. I think what's happening with the superhero movies is exactly what happens in comic book shops. You think you think that Black Widow comic books sell as good as Iron Man comic books? No. You think the Eternal comic books sell as good as the Hulk and Captain America comic books? No. Right? You want money? Then go to your A characters. The B and C character, all comic books don't sell the same. You can't just put any comic book out and they're going to magically sell the same. So what's happening is that people are now just picking and choosing which ones they like more than the others. So you want to make money? You want to make money off superheroes? Do another Iron Man movie. That'll make you money. Done. Done. I just, I just, I just solved your problem for you today. So, right? But if you want to do Madam Web... And you want to do, you know, whatever you're doing in like down the, the food chain of characters, what I call the A, B and C characters. Right. And I think you, they, you got a false positive Hollywood when you took what I thought was a C group called the Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. And they and they ended up working like an A. But that was a false positive. That was just be thankful that worked, Right. That's not how it's going to work for all of them. You did a little bit with with. Uh, Doctor Strange a little bit because he wasn't he wasn't he was maybe a B minus C plus when you made a movie out of him too okay so you had two right but you just don't get to take anybody anytime anywhere so you want to start doing 50 comic book movies that's like asking me to buy 50 comic books I'm going to start to rank them and 
and and I'm gonna just tell you which ones I like the best and which ones I don't. So I, to me, they should be going into comic book stores and they'd be getting all this data for free. Yeah, so. I stand corrected. It's mediocrity fatigue is what it is, not superhero fatigue. Um, well, I'm very excited at all the prospects for Spawn. I can't wait to see it. Um, I want to mention, I want to segue now because you celebrated another anniversary recently. McFarland Toys, 30 yeah. years. So you've not only you not only mastered comic books, you've, but you've mastered the toy industry um, in many people's opinions. Um, what are you doing to, I mean, I know you released the, the joint figure of your first Spawn drawing with an actual figure of yourself, which sold out. I missed that. But what else are you guys doing for the 30th anniversary? Uh, you know, sort of going back to the well on some characters that we've already done in the past, you know, reissuing some, taking some of the style that we used in the past and uh, sort of modernizing it and or doing different characters with that style. So just, you know, sort of winking back to some of the early years, not necessarily year one per se, but just some of the years a bit, right? Um, and that's and that's it. Just it, it just have a little bit of fun with it, just to say, hey, we're still here after thirty years. We got some fun stuff. We got a couple of goofy things we got coming down the pipeline, and we're still you know relevant after thirty years. Just like what I did with the Spawn 350, right? Hey, after 30 years, we're still here. We still matter. We were the number one selling book that month. Cool, right? Uh, just letting you know we're not, we haven't gone away. So just just part of, you know, marketing staying relevant. Look, as I get older, I, I, I appreciate anybody who picks a field and can have multi-decade length careers it's because i now know having sort of lived it in two in two areas i know how difficult it can be not only to still be in business but to be relevant and be in business right so because you've seen in almost every industry people come and go so when i look at the rolling stones or kiss or Ozzy Osbourne or whatever. And I, I go, man, those guys have had 50 close to, you know, for the Rolling Stones, 60 year careers in a shark infested industry that you and I could list a thousand groups that came and went within three or four years, even, even if they had a number one hit and then they disappeared three or four years later, right? NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys didn't have 50 year careers. So that people survive. I, I I admire survivors. I'm less concerned about the talking, which is a different conversation. Do you like Ozzy's music? Do you like Kiss's music or or the Rolling Stones music? That's another conversation. What I'm saying is that regardless of whether I like their music or not, they have survived. And I know the difficulty of surviving. And these guys... So surviving is its own daily victory. And so like, that's it. I'm just sort of saying, hey, 30 years later, we're still here. Anybody else want to try? Anybody else want to try it? Oh, I'm, I'm hoping that the message is that maybe there might be one or two crazy people listening that might want to try it themselves. And they may come up with a 30-year career themselves that may be three, five, 10 times more exciting than anything I ever did. I mean, it's rare when somebody can be successful in one industry and you've done it in two. So I think it's, you know, something to be commended for sure. Oh, I I, I still got a couple of tricks in a couple other industries. So. <laughs> I'm here for all of it, man. I want to bring it back to comics before, you know, we wrap it up. Uh, recently, you did this really cool thing called Sponuary, the 2020 and 2024 uh, cover challenge. Yep. Where did the idea for that come to you from? And how has the response been as well? Well, the response was huge. We got, I think, like about 4,000 entrants, <laughs> right? Like, I thought we were going to get, like, maybe at 400. Matt, I don't know, right? We got 4,000. And essentially, the contest, for people who don't know, was just, hey, if you think you can got a little bit of art skill and you want to send in your art, and if I end up picking you and, and we can work out a deal, then your art will go and become one of the covers on one of my comic books. So I did, you know, originally it was like, oh, I'll pick four winners. I got four books. Perfect. But there's 
matter of fact, I think I've got a meeting later today to, to, to finalize it, that there are just way too many. So it's going to be way more than four. I'm going to pick way more than four because there's too many good looking pieces that I just go, man, that needs to see the light of day. That needs to see the light of day. That needs to see the light of day. And and the the idea was that I remember, I know how hard it can be at times to catch a break. And I've said before to people that if you want to have any kind of career, besides you have to have sort of tenacity and skill, every now and then you need to have a little bit of dumb luck. You need to, you need to catch a couple of breaks, right? Um, and so if me grabbing 15, 20 people and giving them light and maybe one or two of them people really enjoy. And next thing you know, they're getting a phone call from other companies and they're doing covers like cool, right? Like I, just pay it forward a little bit. I would have liked somebody had given me that chance early in my career. So let's go ahead. Let, let, let's do it. What's the harm? We get a good looking cover and we expose the world to another artist that might become a big shot. All right. I'll be a proud papa at that point. I knew him when. <laughs> so that's it. And I, I'm not, I'm not looking for anything other than as a, as a, as a manager of a team, your job is to put talent on the field. And then it's up to the talent to show whether they're worthy of being on the field. Yeah. I'm very, I thought it was such a cool thing. And like to see, I mean, I have quite a few friends that submitted art too. So it was cool oh, yeah. to see all these like hashtags, Fonuary and all this stuff come in flooding. Yeah. Um, it was awesome. I can't wait to see that. I definitely want to pick up those covers when they come out. Yeah. Um, but I do want to ask a couple more things. One, yeah. you had the artist edition for, I mean, like we've done this, we've seen the Spider-Man one that IDW's put out, but you did a spawn one back in the day. Is there any chance that we may get that back in print or yep. even doing a new one? Yep. Yeah, both. We, we, we had that conversation last month. So uh, I didn't know it had been so long since the first one. I, I Again, you lose years because of the, the pandemic. <laughs> I just like, I thought, ah, it came out a couple of years ago. Do we even have any in inventory? And I'm like, inventory? Todd, that's been sold out for like six years. <laughs> so I was like, what? I didn't even know we published it six years ago. It was like close to seven. Um, so yes, we're going to be, we're going to be doing, uh, putting the first one back in the print and then doing more of them. Not, and not only with my art, but I think that, you know, Greg and, and uh, Javi and Carlo and, and Brett, each of them deserve like one of their own books, because if you see their artwork in black and white, it's pretty dazzling. Yeah, man, I'm excited for that. Um, and then you mentioned, you know, like you talked about, we talked about like, if you were to go back to Spider-Man, I'm not saying, will you go back ever, but you did do a crossover with like Batman recently. Uh, well, not recently, but you know, Rel since we've last talked um yeah. is there any other crossovers or is there anything that could get you back to drawing an entire issue well I'll just spawn itself i mean at some point i might just wind down and just go ahead on all the complications of all my businesses i'm just going to go back being an artist my guess that's how i'm going to wind down my life anyway so just i just want to get back to it um and then on a like now on a grander scale the only one that would be Tempting, but again, I'd have to find the time and I don't really have it, would be would be like a, a, a Spawn Spidey crossover with Venom in it, right? With And me writing, penciling, inking, right? So I know I get lots of nice people that I know, my peers are going, hey, Todd, have you ever thought about Spidey, Spidey Spawn? I can help you with it and whatever. Like, I, I, just, I just don't think, first of all, I don't need anybody to help me write it. Um, I'm good. Uh, why? Because I created both those characters on some level, co-created the one and created the other one. So I, I, I've got a handle on both of them. Um, and artistically, I don't think anybody wants me inking. Like, I mean, Greg Batman, he made his mark on Batman, right? And he actually made his mark on Spawn. So it made sense for me to go over ink Greg's uh, stuff on, on, on the uh, Batman Spawn. Spider-Man, like, if, if it, it has to be, if I ever do it, it has to be all like all McFarlane, right? Because the little fan in me would have wanted, if John Byrne came back, to be like, I want the boy, I want the boy band back the way that it was before, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know, maybe, you know, I, I have conversations off and on with the, 
marvel about it from time to time, but I just like we don't have we don't I, I just don't have the bandwidth to do it right now. So, you know, just let's just check back every six months and see if anything dramatically has changed in my life. So. Well, I will definitely be keeping my fingers crossed for that because I don't. Yeah, just all you. It doesn't need to be anybody else on that book. That's I mean that sounds like the dream book. That would like break the industry if if that was announced for sure. Um. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking time to chat with me. I, I mean, I'm so happy to see 350 issues of Spawn and all the spinoffs, all the series that are coming out. You've consistently been putting out dope comics into the world, and I know there's a bunch more to come. So I want to thank you, and uh, I can't wait to chat with you again sometime in the future. Yeah, sure. I mean, we're only a year and a half-ish away from you know, all of a sudden books like King Spawn and Gunslinger and Scorch getting to 50, 50, 50, right? Because they're they're only two two months behind each other, right? So you're mm -hmm. going to get King Spawn 50, two months later, Gunslinger 50, two months later, Scorch 50, right? And so all of a sudden, in short order here, uh, there will be four, there'll be four books that are 50 issues or more, which to me is a bit of a magical number um because there's not a lot of books that have reached 50 mm -hmm. uh, on the independent side right um and so i i sort of take pride in sort of digging deep holes if you will uh and and we'll we'll see we'll see if you know once we get to 50 then hopefully those books will all find their way to 100 which would be cool so. oh yeah well thank you so much Todd. i can't wait to uh talk with you again in the future all right, you be good. All Thanks, right, have, have a good one.